The revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testified to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, whatever he saw. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep what is written in it, because the time is near. John, to the seven churches in Asia. Grace and peace to you from the one who is, who was, and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has set us free from our sins by his blood. And made us a kingdom, priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. And every eye will see him. Even those who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth. Will mourn over him. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, your brother and partner in the affliction, kingdom, and endurance that are in Jesus, was on the island called Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard a loud voice behind me like a trumpet, saying, Write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. When I turned I saw seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstands was one like the Son of Man, dressed in a robe and with a golden sash wrapped around his chest. The hair of his head was white as wool, white as snow, and his eyes like a fiery flame. His feet were like fine bronze as it is fired in a furnace, and his voice like the sound of cascading waters. He had seven stars in his right hand, a sharp double-edged sword came from his mouth, and his face was shining like the sun at full strength. When I saw him, I fell at his feet like a dead man. He laid his right hand on me and said, Don't be afraid. I am the first and the last. And the living one. I was dead, but look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. Therefore write what you have seen, what is, and what will take place after this. The mystery of the seven stars you saw in my right hand and of the seven golden lampstands is this, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Write to the angel of the church in Ephesus, thus says the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand and who walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, and your endurance, and that you cannot tolerate evil people. You have tested those who call themselves apostles and are not, and you have found them to be liars. I know that you have persevered and endured hardships for the sake of my name, and you have not grown weary. But I have this against you, you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember then how far you have fallen, repent, and do the works you did at first. Otherwise, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. Yet you do have this, you hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Let anyone who has ears to hear listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who conquers, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Write to the angel of the church in Smyrna, thus says the first and the last, the one who was dead and came to life. I know your affliction and poverty, but you are rich. I know the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Don't be afraid of what you are about to suffer. Look, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison to test you, and you will experience affliction for ten days. Be faithful to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. Let anyone who has ears to hear listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who conquers will never be harmed by the second death. 
Write to the angel of the church in Pergamum, thus says the one who has the sharp, double-edged sword. I know where you live, where Satan's throne is. Yet you are holding on to my name and did not deny your faith in me, even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness who was put to death among you, where Satan lives. But I have a few things against you. You have some there who hold to the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to place a stumbling block in front of the Israelites, to eat meat sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual immorality. In the same way, you also have those who hold to the teaching of the Nicolaitans. So repent. Otherwise, I will come to you quickly and fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Let anyone who has ears to hear listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who conquers, I will give some of the hidden manna. I will also give him a white stone, and on the stone a new name is inscribed that no one knows except the one who receives it. Write to the angel of the church in Thyatira, thus says the Son of God, the one whose eyes are like a fiery flame and whose feet are like fine bronze. I know your works, your love, faithfulness, service, and endurance. I know that your last works are greater than the first. But I have this against you, you tolerate the woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess and teaches and deceives my servants to commit sexual immorality and to eat meat sacrificed to idols. I gave her time to repent, but she does not want to repent of her sexual immorality. Look, I will throw her into a sickbed and those who commit adultery with her into great affliction. Unless they repent of her works. I will strike her children dead. Then all the churches will know that I am the one who examines minds and hearts, and I will give to each of you according to your works. I say to the rest of you in Thyatira, who do not hold this teaching, who haven't known the so-called secrets of Satan, as they say, I am not putting any other burden on you. Only hold on to what you have until I come. The one who conquers and who keeps my works to the end, I will give him authority over the nations. And he will rule them with an iron scepter. He will shatter them like pottery. Just as I have received this from my father. I will also give him the morning star. Let anyone who has ears to hear listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. Write to the angel of the church in Sardis, thus says the one who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know your works, you have a reputation for being alive, but you are dead. Be alert and strengthen what remains, which is about to die, for I have not found your works complete before my God. Remember, then, what you have received and heard, keep it, and repent. If you are not alert, I will come like a thief, and you have no idea at what hour I will come upon you. But you have a few people in Sardis who have not defiled their clothes, and they will walk with me in white, because they are worthy. In the same way, the one who conquers will be dressed in white clothes, and I will never erase his name from the book of life but will acknowledge his name before my Father and before his angels. Let anyone who has ears to hear listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. Write to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, thus says the Holy One, the True One, the one who has the key of David, who opens and no one will close, and who closes and no one opens. I know your works. Look, I have placed before you an open door that no one can close because you have but little power, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Note this, I will make those from the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews and are not, but are lying, I will make them come and bow down at your feet and they will know that I have loved you. Because you have kept my command to endure, I will also keep you from the hour of testing that is going to come on the whole world to test those who live on the earth. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have, so that no one takes your crown. The one who conquers I will make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he will never go out again. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and my new name. Let anyone who has ears to hear listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. Write to the angel of the church in Laodicea, thus says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, 
the originator of God's creation. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot. So, because you are lukewarm, and neither hot nor cold, I am going to vomit you out of my mouth. For you say, I'm rich, I have become wealthy and need nothing, and you don't realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I advise you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you may be rich, white clothes so that you may be dressed and your shameful nakedness not be exposed, and ointment to spread on your eyes so that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be zealous and repent. See, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him, and he with me. To the one who conquers I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I also conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. Let anyone who has ears to hear listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. After this I looked, and there in heaven was an open door. The first voice that I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. Immediately I was in the Spirit, and there was a throne in heaven and someone was seated on it. The one seated there had the appearance of jasper and carnelian stone. A rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald surrounded the throne. Around the throne were twenty-four thrones, and on the throne sat twenty-four elders dressed in white clothes, with golden crowns on their heads. Flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder came from the throne. Seven fiery torches were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Something like a sea of glass, similar to crystal, was also before the throne. Point four living creatures covered with eyes in front and in back were around the throne on each side. The first living creature was like a lion, the second living creature was like an ox, the third living creature had a face like a man, and the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings, they were covered with eyes around and inside. Day and night they never stop, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy. Lord God, the Almighty. Who was, who is, and who is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to the one seated on the throne, the one who lives forever and ever. The twenty-four elders fall down before the one seated on the throne and worship the one who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne and say, Our Lord and God, You are worthy to receive glory and honor and power, because You have created all things, and by Your will, they exist and were created. Then I saw in the right hand of the one seated on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides, sealed with seven seals. I also saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals. But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or even to look in it. I wept and wept because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or even to look in it. Then one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Look, the lion from the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered so that he is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw one like a slaughtered lamb standing in the midst of the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders. He had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent into all the earth. He went and took the scroll out of the right hand of the one seated on the throne. When he took the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp and golden bowls filled with incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, You are worthy to take the scroll. And to open its seals. Because you were slaughtered. And you purchased people. For God by your blood. From every tribe and language and people and nation. You made them a kingdom, and priests to our God, and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels around the throne, 
and also of the living creatures and of the elders. Their number was countless thousands, plus thousands of thousands. They said with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slaughtered. To receive power and riches. And wisdom and strength. And honor and glory and blessing. I heard every creature in heaven, on earth, under the earth, on the sea, and everything in them say, Blessing and honor and glory and power. Be to the one seated on the throne. And to the Lamb, for ever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshipped. Then I saw the Lamb open one of the seven seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures say with a voice like thunder, Come. I looked, and there was a white horse. Its rider held a bow, a crown was given to him, and he went out as a conqueror in order to conquer. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come. Then another horse went out, a fiery red one, and its rider was allowed to take peace from the earth, so that people would slaughter one another. And a large sword was given to him. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come. And I looked, and there was a black horse. Its rider held a set of scales in his hand. Then I heard something like a voice among the four living creatures say, a quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, but do not harm the oil and the wine. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come. And I looked, and there was a pale green horse. Its rider was named Death, and Hades was following after him. They were given authority over a fourth of the earth, to kill by the sword, by famine, by plague, and by the wild animals of the earth. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slaughtered because of the word of God and the testimony they had given. They cried out with a loud voice, Lord, the one who is holy and true, how long until you judge those who live on the earth and avenge our blood? So they were each given a white robe, and they were told to rest a little while longer until the number would be completed of their fellow servants and their brothers and sisters, who were going to be killed just as they had been. Then I saw him open the sixth seal. A violent earthquake occurred, the sun turned black like sackcloth made of hair, the entire moon became like blood. The stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its unripe figs when shaken by a high wind. The sky was split apart like a scroll being rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved from its place. Then the kings of the earth, the nobles, the generals, the rich, the powerful, and every slave and free person hid in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains. And they said to the mountains and to the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of the one seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Because the great day of their wrath has come. And who is able to stand? After this I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, restraining the four winds of the earth so that no wind could blow on the earth or on the sea or on any tree. Then I saw another angel rising up from the east, who had the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who were allowed to harm the earth and the sea. Don't harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we seal the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of the sealed, 144,000 sealed from every tribe of the Israelites. 12,000 sealed from the tribe of Judah, 12,000 from the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 from the tribe of Gad. 12,000 from the tribe of Asher, 12,000 from the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000 from the tribe of Manasseh. 12,000 from the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 from the tribe of Levi, 12,000 from the tribe of Issachar. 12,000 from the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 from the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 sealed from the tribe of Benjamin. After this I looked, and there was a vast multitude from every nation, tribe, people, and language, which no one could number, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands. 
And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne, and along with the elders and the four living creatures they fell face down before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom, and thanksgiving and honor, and power and strength, be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, Who are these people in white robes, and where did they come from? I said to him, Sir, you know, then he told me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God. And they serve him day and night in his temple. The one seated on the throne will shelter them. They will no longer hunger. They will no longer thirst. The sun will no longer strike them. Nor will any scorching heat. For the Lamb who is at the center of the throne. Will shepherd them. He will guide them to springs of the waters of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. Then I saw the seven angels who stand in the presence of God, seven trumpets were given to them. Another angel, with a golden incense burner, came and stood at the altar. He was given a large amount of incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar in front of the throne. The smoke of the incense, with the prayers of the saints, went up in the presence of God from the angel's hand. The angel took the incense burner, filled it with fire from the altar, and hurled it to the earth. There were peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. And the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to blow them. The first angel blew his trumpet, and hail and fire, mixed with blood, were hurled to the earth. So a third of the earth was burned up, a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. The second angel blew his trumpet, and something like a great mountain ablaze with fire was hurled into the sea. So a third of the sea became blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. The third angel blew his trumpet, and a great star, blazing like a torch, fell from heaven. It fell on a third of the rivers and springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood, and a third of the waters became Wormwood. So, many of the people died from the waters, because they had been made bitter. The fourth angel blew his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened. A third of the day was without light and also a third of the night. I looked and heard an eagle flying high overhead, crying out in a loud voice, Woe! Woe! Woe to those who live on the earth, because of the remaining trumpet blasts that the three angels are about to sound. The fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from heaven to earth. The key for the shaft to the abyss was given to him. He opened the shaft to the abyss, and smoke came up out of the shaft like smoke from a great furnace so that the sun and the air were darkened by the smoke from the shaft. Then locusts came out of the smoke onto the earth, and power was given to them like the power that scorpions have on the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth, or any green plant, or any tree, but only those people who do not have God's seal on their foreheads. They were not permitted to kill them but were to torment them for five months, their torment is like the torment caused by a scorpion when it stings someone. In those days people will seek death and will not find it, they will long to die, but death will flee from them. The appearance of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle. Something like golden crowns was on their heads, their faces were like human faces. They had hair like women's hair, their teeth were like lion's teeth. They had chests like iron breastplates, the sound of their wings was like the sound of many chariots with horses rushing into battle. And they had tails with stingers like scorpions, so that with their tails they had the power to harm people for five months. 
They had as their king the angel of the abyss, his name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek he has the name Apollyon. The first woe has passed. There are still two more woes to come after this. The sixth angel blew his trumpet. From the four horns of the golden altar that is before God, I heard a voice. Say to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who were prepared for the hour, day, month, and year were released to kill a third of the human race. The number of mounted troops was two hundred million, I heard their number. This is how I saw the horses and their riders in the vision, they had breastplates that were fiery red, hyacinth blue, and sulfur yellow. The heads of the horses were like the heads of lions, and from their mouths came fire, smoke, and sulfur. A third of the human race was killed by these three plagues, by the fire, the smoke, and the sulfur that came from their mouths. For the power of the horses is in their mouths and in their tails, because their tails, which resemble snakes, have heads that inflict injury. The rest of the people, who were not killed by these plagues, did not repent of the works of their hands to stop worshipping demons and idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood, which cannot see, hear, or walk. And they did not repent of their murders, their sorceries, their sexual immorality, or their thefts. Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven, wrapped in a cloud, with a rainbow over his head. His face was like the sun, his legs were like pillars of fire. And he held a little scroll opened in his hand. He put his right foot on the sea, his left on the land. And he called out with a loud voice like a roaring lion. When he cried out, the seven thunders raised their voices. And when the seven thunders spoke, I was about to write, but I heard a voice from heaven, saying, Seal up what the seven thunders said, and do not write it down. Then the angel that I had seen standing on the sea and on the land raised his right hand to heaven. He swore by the one who lives forever and ever, who created heaven and what is in it, the earth and what is in it, and the sea and what is in it, there will no longer be a delay. But in the days when the seventh angel will blow his trumpet, then the mystery of God will be completed, as he announced to his servants the prophets. Then the voice that I heard from heaven spoke to me again and said, Go, take the scroll that lies open in the hand of the angel who is standing on the sea and on the land. So I went to the angel and asked him to give me the little scroll. He said to me, Take and eat it, it will be bitter in your stomach, but it will be as sweet as honey in your mouth. Then I took the little scroll from the angel's hand and ate it. It was as sweet as honey in my mouth, but when I ate it, my stomach became bitter. And they said to me, You must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. Then I was given a measuring reed like a rod, with these words, Go and measure the temple of God and the altar, and count those who worship there. But exclude the courtyard outside the temple. Don't measure it, because it is given to the nations, and they will trample the holy city for forty-two months. I will grant my two witnesses authority to prophesy for one thousand two hundred and sixty days, dressed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. If anyone wants to harm them, fire comes from their mouths and consumes their enemies, if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in this way. They have authority to close up the sky so that it does not rain during the days of their prophecy. They also have power over the waters to turn them into blood and to strike the earth with every plague whenever they want. When they finish their testimony, the beast that comes up out of the abyss will make war on them, conquer them, and kill them. Their dead bodies will lie in the main street of the great city, which figuratively is called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. And some of the peoples, tribes, languages, and nations will view their bodies for three and a half days and not permit their bodies to be put into a tomb. Those who live on the earth will gloat over them and celebrate and send gifts to one another because these two prophets had tormented those who live on the earth. But after three and a half days, 
the breath of life from God entered them, and they stood on their feet. Great fear fell on those who saw them. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. They went up to heaven in a cloud, while their enemies watched them. At that moment a violent earthquake took place, a tenth of the city fell, and seven thousand people were killed in the earthquake. The survivors were terrified and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe has passed. Take note, the third woe is coming soon. The seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. And he will reign forever and ever. The twenty-four elders, who were seated before God on their thrones, fell face down and worshipped God, saying, We give you thanks, Lord God, the Almighty, who is and who was, because you have taken your great power, and have begun to reign. The nations were angry, but your wrath has come. The time has come for the dead to be judged, and to give the reward to your servants the prophets, to the saints, and to those who fear your name, both small and great. And the time has come to destroy those who destroy the earth. Then the temple of God in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant appeared in his temple. There were flashes of lightning, rumblings and peals of thunder, an earthquake, and severe hail. A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet and a crown of twelve stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in labor and agony as she was about to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven, there was a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, and on its heads were seven crowns. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in heaven and hurled them to the earth. And the dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she did give birth it might devour her child. She gave birth to a son, a male who is going to rule all nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and to his throne. The woman fled into the wilderness, where she had a place prepared by God, to be nourished there for 1260 days. Then war broke out in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon and his angels also fought. But he could not prevail, and there was no place for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was thrown out, the ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, the one who deceives the whole world. He was thrown to earth, and his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, The salvation and the power, and the kingdom of our God, and the authority of his Christ, have now come, because the accuser of our brothers and sisters, who accuses them, before our God day and night, has been thrown down. They conquered him, by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, for they did not love their lives, to the point of death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has come down to you, with great fury, because he knows his time is short. When the dragon saw that he had been thrown down to the earth, he persecuted the woman who had given birth to the male child. The woman was given two wings of a great eagle, so that she could fly from the serpent's presence to her place in the wilderness, where she was nourished for a time, times, and half a time. From his mouth the serpent spewed water like a river flowing after the woman, to sweep her away with a flood. But the earth helped the woman. The earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the river that the dragon had spewed from his mouth. So the dragon was furious with the woman and went off to wage war against the rest of her offspring, those who keep the commands of God and hold firmly to the testimony about Jesus. The dragon stood on the sand of the sea. And I saw a beast coming up out of the sea. It had ten horns and seven heads. On its horns were ten crowns, and on its heads were blasphemous names. 
The beast I saw was like a leopard, its feet were like a bear's, and its mouth was like a lion's mouth. The dragon gave the beast his power, his throne, and great authority. One of its heads appeared to be fatally wounded, but its fatal wound was healed, the whole earth was amazed and followed the beast. They worshipped the dragon because he gave authority to the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to wage war against it? The beast was given a mouth to utter boasts and blasphemies. It was allowed to exercise authority for forty-two months. It began to speak blasphemies against God, to blaspheme his name and his dwelling, those who dwell in heaven. And it was permitted to wage war against the saints and to conquer them. It was also given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. All those who live on the earth will worship it, everyone whose name was not written from the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb who was slaughtered. If anyone has ears to hear, let him listen. If anyone is to be taken captive, into captivity he goes. If anyone is to be killed with a sword, with a sword he will be killed, this calls for endurance and faithfulness from the saints. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, it had two horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. It exercises all the authority of the first beast on its behalf and compels the earth and those who live on it to worship the first beast, whose fatal wound was healed. It also performs great signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to earth in front of people. It deceives those who live on the earth because of the signs that it is permitted to perform in the presence of the beast, telling those who live on the earth to make an image of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. It was permitted to give breath to the image of the beast, so that the image of the beast could both speak and cause whoever would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. And it makes everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on his right hand or on his forehead. So that no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark, the beast's name or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let the one who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, because it is the number of a person. Its number is 666. Then I looked, and there was the Lamb, standing on Mount Zion, and with him were 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. I heard a sound from heaven like the sound of cascading waters and like the rumbling of loud thunder. The sound I heard was like harpists playing on their harps. They sang a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders, but no one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. These are the ones who have not defiled themselves with women, since they remain virgins. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. They were redeemed from humanity as the firstfruits for God and the Lamb. No lie was found in their mouths, they are blameless. Then I saw another angel flying high overhead, with the eternal gospel to announce to the inhabitants of the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He spoke with a loud voice, Fear God and give Him glory, because the hour of His judgment has come. Worship the One who made heaven and earth, the sea, and the springs of water. And another, a second angel, followed, saying, It has fallen, Babylon the Great has fallen. She made all the nations drink the wine of her sexual immorality, which brings wrath. And another, a third angel, followed them and spoke with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and its image and receives a mark on his forehead or on his hand, he will also drink the wine of God's wrath, which is poured full strength into the cup of his anger. He will be tormented with fire and sulfur in the sight of the holy angels and in the sight of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment will go up forever and ever. There is no rest day or night for those who worship the beast and its image, or anyone who receives the mark of its name. This calls for endurance from the saints, who keep God's commands and their faith in Jesus. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. 
Yes, says the Spirit, so they will rest from their labors, since their works follow them. Then I looked, and there was a white cloud, and one like the Son of Man was seated on the cloud, with a golden crown on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Another angel came out of the temple, crying out in a loud voice to the one who was seated on the cloud, Use your sickle and reap, for the time to reap has come, since the harvest of the earth is ripe. So the one seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. Then another angel who also had a sharp sickle came out of the temple in heaven. Yet another angel, who had authority over fire, came from the altar, and he called with a loud voice to the one who had the sharp sickle, Use your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of grapes from the vineyard of the earth, because its grapes have ripened. So the angel swung his sickle at the earth and gathered the grapes from the vineyard of the earth, and he threw them into the great winepress of God's wrath. Then the press was trampled outside the city, and blood flowed out of the press up to the horses' bridles for about 180 miles. Then I saw another great and awe-inspiring sign in heaven, seven angels with the seven last plagues, for with them God's wrath will be completed. I also saw something like a sea of glass mixed with fire, and those who had won the victory over the beast, its image, and the number of its name, were standing on the sea of glass with harps from God. They sang the song of God's servant Moses and the song of the Lamb, Great and awe-inspiring are your works. Lord God, the Almighty. Just and true are your ways. King of the nations. Lord, who will not fear. And glorify your name. For you alone are holy. All the nations will come. And worship before you. Because your righteous acts. Have been revealed. After this I looked, and the heavenly temple, the tabernacle of testimony, was opened. Out of the temple came the seven angels with the seven plagues, dressed in pure, bright linen, with golden sashes wrapped around their chests. One of the four living creatures gave the seven angels seven golden bowls filled with the wrath of God who lives forever and ever. Then the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from His power, and no one could enter the temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the seven bowls of God's wrath on the earth. The first went and poured out his bowl on the earth, and severely painful sores broke out on the people who had the mark of the beast and who worshipped its image. The second poured out his bowl into the sea. It turned to blood like that of a dead person, and all life in the sea died. The third poured out his bowl into the rivers and the springs of water, and they became blood. I heard the angel of the water say, You are just. The Holy One, who is and who was. Because you have passed judgment on these things. Because they poured out. The blood of the saints and the prophets. You have given them blood to drink. They deserve it. I heard the altar say, Yes, Lord God, the Almighty. True and just are your judgments. The fourth poured out his bowl on the sun. It was allowed to scorch people with fire. And people were scorched by the intense heat. So they blasphemed the name of God, who has the power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. The fifth poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and its kingdom was plunged into darkness. People gnawed their tongues because of their pain. And blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, but they did not repent of their works. The sixth poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. Then I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming from the dragon's mouth, from the beast's mouth, and from the mouth of the false prophet. For they are demonic spirits performing signs, who travel to the kings of the whole world to assemble them for the battle on the great day of God, the Almighty. Look, I am coming like a thief. Blessed is the one who is alert and remains clothed so that he may not go around naked and people see his shame. So they assembled the kings at the place called in Hebrew, Armageddon. Then the seventh poured out his bowl into the air, 
and a loud voice came out of the temple from the throne, saying, It is done. There were flashes of lightning, rumblings, and peals of thunder. And a severe earthquake occurred like no other since people have been on the earth, so great was the quake. The great city split into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. Babylon the Great was remembered in God's presence, he gave her the cup filled with the wine of his fierce anger. Every island fled, and the mountains disappeared. Enormous hailstones, each weighing about a hundred pounds, fell from the sky on people, and they blasphemed God for the plague of hail because that plague was extremely severe. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and spoke with me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the notorious prostitute who is seated on many waters. The kings of the earth committed sexual immorality with her, and those who live on the earth became drunk on the wine of her sexual immorality. Then he carried me away in the spirit to a wilderness that I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was covered with blasphemous names and had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet, adorned with gold, jewels, and pearls. She had a golden cup in her hand filled with everything detestable and with the impurities of her prostitution. On her forehead was written a name, a mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes and of the detestable things of the earth. Then I saw that the woman was drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the witnesses to Jesus. When I saw her, I was greatly astonished. Then the angel said to me, Why are you astonished? I will explain to you the mystery of the woman and of the beast, with the seven heads and the ten horns, that carries her. The beast that you saw was, and is not, and is about to come up from the abyss and go to destruction. Those who live on the earth whose names have not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world will be astonished when they see the beast that was, and is not, and is to come. This calls for a mind that has wisdom, the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman is seated. They are also seven kings. Five have fallen, one is, the other has not yet come, and when he comes, he must remain for only a little while. The beast that was and is not, is itself an eighth king, but it belongs to the seven and is going to destruction. The ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom, but they will receive authority as kings with the beast for one hour. These have one purpose, and they give their power and authority to the beast. These will make war against the Lamb, but the Lamb will conquer them because he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Those with him are called, chosen, and faithful. He also said to me, The waters you saw, where the prostitute was seated, are peoples, multitudes, nations, and languages. The ten horns you saw, and the beast, will hate the prostitute. They will make her desolate and naked, devour her flesh, and burn her up with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to carry out his plan by having one purpose and to give their kingdom to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman you saw is the great city that has royal power over the kings of the earth. After this I saw another angel with great authority coming down from heaven, and the earth was illuminated by his splendor. He called out in a mighty voice, It has fallen. Babylon the Great has fallen. She has become a home for demons. A haunt for every unclean spirit. A haunt for every unclean bird. And a haunt for every unclean and despicable beast. For all the nations have drunk. The wine of her sexual immorality. Which brings wrath. The kings of the earth. Have committed sexual immorality with her. And the merchants of the earth. Have grown wealthy from her sensuality and excess. Then I heard another voice from heaven. Come out of her, my people. So that you will not share in her sins. Or receive any of her plagues for her sins are piled up to heaven. And God has remembered her crimes. Pay her back the way she also paid. And double it according to her works. In the cup in which she mixed. Mix a double portion for her. 
as much as she glorified herself and indulged her sensual and excessive ways. Give her that much torment and grief. For she says in her heart, I sit as a queen. I am not a widow. And I will never see grief. For this reason her plagues will come in just one day. Death and grief and famine. She will be burned up with fire. Because the Lord God who judges her is mighty. The kings of the earth who have committed sexual immorality and shared her sensual and excessive ways will weep and mourn over her when they see the smoke from her burning. They will stand far off in fear of her torment, saying, Woe, woe, the great city. Babylon, the mighty city. For in a single hour. Your judgment has come. The merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her, because no one buys their cargo any longer. Cargo of gold, silver, jewels, and pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, and scarlet, all kinds of fragrant wood products, objects of ivory, objects of expensive wood, brass, iron, and marble. Cinnamon, spice, incense, myrrh, and frankincense, wine, olive oil, fine flour, and grain, cattle and sheep, horses and carriages, and slaves, human lives. The fruit you craved has left you. All your splendid and glamorous things are gone. They will never find them again. The merchants of these things, who became rich from her, will stand far off in fear of her torment, weeping and mourning. Saying, Woe, woe, the great city! Dressed in fine linen, purple, and scarlet. Adorned with gold, jewels, and pearls. For in a single hour, such fabulous wealth was destroyed, and every shipmaster, seafarer, the sailors, and all who do business by sea, stood far off. As they watched the smoke from her burning and kept crying out, who was like the great city. They threw dust on their heads and kept crying out, weeping, and mourning, woe, woe, the great city. Where all those who have ships on the sea became rich from her wealth. For in a single hour she was destroyed. Rejoice over her, heaven. And you saints, apostles, and prophets. Because God has pronounced on her the judgment she passed on you. Then a mighty angel picked up a stone like a large millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, In this way, Babylon the great city. Will be thrown down violently. And never be found again. The sound of harpists, musicians, flutists, and trumpeters will never be heard in you again. No craftsman of any trade will ever be found in you again. The sound of a mill will never be heard in you again. The light of a lamp will never shine in you again. And the voice of a groom and bride will never be heard in you again. All this will happen, because your merchants were the nobility of the earth, because all the nations were deceived by your sorcery. In her was found the blood of prophets and saints, and of all those slaughtered on the earth. After this I heard something like the loud voice of a vast multitude in heaven, saying, Hallelujah! Salvation, glory, and power belong to our God because his judgments are true and righteous, because he has judged the notorious prostitute, who corrupted the earth with her sexual immorality, and he has avenged the blood of his servants, that was on her hands. A second time they said, Hallelujah! Her smoke ascends forever and ever. Then the twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God, who is seated on the throne, saying, Men. Hallelujah. A voice came from the throne, saying, Praise our God. All his servants, and the ones who fear him. Both small and great. Then I heard something like the voice of a vast multitude, like the sound of cascading waters, and like the rumbling of loud thunder, saying, Hallelujah, because our Lord God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us be glad, rejoice, and give him glory. 
because the marriage of the Lamb has come. And his bride has prepared herself. She was given fine linen to wear, bright and pure, for the fine linen represents the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, Write, Blessed are those invited to the marriage feast of the Lamb. He also said to me, These words of God are true. Then I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, Don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers and sisters who hold firmly to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Then I saw heaven opened, and there was a white horse. Its rider is called Faithful and True, and with justice he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a fiery flame, and many crowns were on his head. He had a name written that no one knows except himself. He wore a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. The armies that were in heaven followed him on white horses, wearing pure white linen. A sharp sword came from his mouth, so that he might strike the nations with it. He will rule them with an iron rod. He will also trample the winepress of the fierce anger of God, the Almighty. And he has a name written on his robe and on his thigh, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he called out in a loud voice, saying to all the birds flying high overhead, Come, gather together for the great supper of God. So that you may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of military commanders, the flesh of the mighty, the flesh of horses and of their riders, and the flesh of everyone, both free and slave, small and great. Then I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to wage war against the rider on the horse and against his army. But the beast was taken prisoner, and along with it the false prophet, who had performed the signs in its presence. He deceived those who accepted the mark of the beast and those who worshipped its image with these signs. Both of them were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur. The rest were killed with the sword that came from the mouth of the rider on the horse, and all the birds ate their fill of their flesh. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven holding the key to the abyss and a great chain in his hand. He seized the dragon, that ancient serpent who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. He threw him into the abyss, closed it, and put a seal on it so that he would no longer deceive the nations until the thousand years were completed. After that, he must be released for a short time. Then I saw thrones, and people seated on them who were given authority to judge. I also saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and who had not accepted the mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were completed, this is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is the one who shares in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ, and they will reign with him for a thousand years. When the thousand years are completed, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations at the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them for battle. Their number is like the sand of the sea. They came up across the breadth of the earth and surrounded the encampment of the saints, the beloved city. Then fire came down from heaven and consumed them. The devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Then I saw a great white throne and one seated on it. Earth and heaven fled from his presence, and no place was found for them. I also saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged according to their works by what was written in the books. Then the sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them, each one was judged according to their works. Death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. 
And anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared like a bride adorned for her husband. Then I heard a loud voice from the throne, Look, God's dwelling is with humanity, and he will live with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them and will be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more, grief, crying, and pain will be no more, because the previous things have passed away. Then the one seated on the throne said, Look, I am making everything new. He also said, Write, because these words are faithful and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will freely give to the thirsty from the spring of the water of life. The one who conquers will inherit these things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But the cowards, faithless, detestable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their share will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Then one of the seven angels, who had held the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues, came and spoke with me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. He then carried me away in the spirit to a great, high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. Arrayed with God's glory. Her radiance was like a precious jewel, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. The city had a massive high wall, with twelve gates. Twelve angels were at the gates, the names of the twelve tribes of Israel's sons were inscribed on the gates. There were three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, and three gates on the west. The city wall had twelve foundations, and the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb were on the foundations. The one who spoke with me had a golden measuring rod to measure the city, its gates, and its wall. The city is laid out in a square, its length and width are the same. He measured the city with the rod at twelve thousand stadia. Its length, width, and height are equal. Then he measured its wall, one hundred and forty-four cubits according to human measurement, which the angel used. The building material of its wall was jasper, and the city was pure gold clear as glass. The foundations of the city wall were adorned with every kind of jewel, the first foundation is jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, the fourth emerald. The fifth sardonyx, the sixth carnelian, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysoprase, the eleventh jacinth, the twelfth amethyst. The twelve gates are twelve pearls, each individual gate was made of a single pearl. The main street of the city was pure gold, transparent as glass. I did not see a temple in it, because the Lord God the Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, because the glory of God illuminates it, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never close by day because it will never be night there. They will bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. Nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what is detestable or false, but only those written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Then he showed me the river of the water of life, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Down the middle of the city's main street. The tree of life was on each side of the river, bearing twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree are for healing the nations. And there will no longer be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. Night will be no more, people will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, because the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. Then he said to me, These words are faithful and true. 
The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, has sent his angel to show his servants what must soon take place. Look, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. When I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had shown them to me. But he said to me, Don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you, your brothers the prophets, and those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. Then he said to me, Don't seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, because the time is near. Let the unrighteous go on in unrighteousness, let the filthy still be filthy, let the righteous go on in righteousness, let the holy still be holy. Look, I am coming soon, and my reward is with me to repay each person according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, so that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. Outside are the dogs, the sorcerers, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to attest these things to you for the churches. I am the root and descendant of David, the bright morning star. Both the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Let anyone who hears, say, Come. Let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires take the water of life freely. I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his share of the tree of life and the holy city, which are written about in this book. He who testifies about these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with everyone. Amen.